Black Brit, and we are joined by the amazing Terry Walker. Hi guys. Yes. So Terry, yes. it has been 20 years since the first album you brought out. Yeah. Title. Yeah. How does it feel to be back? Do you know, it's, it's, it's mad to me. First of all, how old are you? I'm 23. So this is mad. So someone talks to me about the album put out 20 years ago. Mm. She was three years old when I put it out. So oh. that's, so you imagine how crazy that is for me. Like, so to me, it means everything to be able to say that I'm independent, doing it on my own terms. When I was signed, actually I was 21, 23 yeah, when I got signed. Age, yeah. wow. So um, that's when I first had my album on a major yeah. deal. So, <clears throat> so coming back here now and doing this full circle, it means everything. Mm -hmm. And to be interviewed by you, yeah. and you know, you guys are owning your own, mm -hmm. it's amazing. It's amazing to see like the cycle. Yeah, just, yeah exactly, yeah, the proper full around. circle. Yeah. Yeah. So your first single from yeah. the album has been released yeah. today. Yeah. What was the inspiration for that? Um, it's funny because, um, have you guys heard of Children's Zeus? So basically yeah. they produced the whole album, but um, oh, okay. I'm, a really, I was really, I'm a really big fan of their music. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I did the first record, I, mean, I said I wanted them to make the album. When I did the first record, I knew instantly I'm ready for this album and the first record is the song that I've released today. Okay. It's called Finally Over You because I've been in this industry for so long and it's been so many moments of just roller coaster rides but it's one thing that I've always known that what that I wanted to do is just be authentic, be myself yeah. and just make the music that I make. So when Finally Over You, when I finally kind of wrote that, that, that chorus, I thought to myself, oh my God, I actually don't care anymore what anyone else say, I'm doing this on my terms without worrying about what anyone else says, I'm not going to get mad at anyone, I'm going to get upset at anyone. So when I'm saying find it over you, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not even gonna bother trying to explain myself to anyone no. that, that I don't need to explain myself to. No. So find it over you for me is such an important record because I'm really saying I'm done now. So if you ask me one more another question, then you know be prepared to get whatever mm -hmm. you're gonna get in it. So that's it. You're doing it for you. Yeah. Fully just yeah. for you. I it's like no more that. Explanations. Yeah. So with the album itself, what's been the inspiration for that album? Well, that's that's the thing because I think I've been I've done so much over the years, and yeah. for me because. <clears throat> In a way, I'm, I've went backwards on myself because when I when I got signed to Mercury Def Jam, Def Jam, the Def Jam UK, mm -hmm. um, you know, I did I got I was I was Mercury nominated. I had four Mobos. I've done Glastonbury. I've done Jules Holland. I've done I've sold out all my own shows. Okay. But then it got to a point where when I decided the um, second album came, and they tried to change me because I didn't mm. sell I didn't sell as much. But I was mm -hmm. really like, I was really well known. Like like my my, my, my critical acclaim was really great. But I wasn't selling records. Yeah. So with, you know, with a label, it's like it's like a bank, isn't it? It's a business. So if they're not, yeah. if you're not making them back money, mm -hmm. then they they need to see some changes. Yeah. But I didn't have the privilege of um, being allowed to grow on my own terms. Whilst other artists were allowed to grow because there was room for them to do that. Yeah. But with me, I think especially being a black female back then, if it didn't work, then it was seen as as a loss. Mm -hmm. So. I just decided, you know what, let me go, let me find myself yeah. by myself on my own terms That's and then so if it, does, it makes sense again and I can come back. Mm. But it took, took um, nearly 20 years to get yeah. back here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. but now that I'm back here now, I actually need them, I'm doing mm. it on my own. You so. can do it by yourself, yeah. yeah. I think that's, that speaks to the change within the scene as yeah. a whole in the last 20 years. So what would you say has been the difference in the world of R&B between then and now and how's that affected like the music that you create now? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's the thing is, the world of R&B, it's so weird when people say to me the world of R&B because mm. I think it's all soul, it's all great music to me, mm -hmm. it's soul to me. So when I first, for instance, heard Lauren or Monica and them times, I didn't even, might, might not even realise that they were sampling other okay. people's music. Yeah. And then you go yeah. back to some of the records that they sampled from like Shalimar or then The Barge. And then, so I'm thinking, oh, we've done R&B, mm -hmm. but like, they were R&B before we were R&B. So it's just, all it's, all it's done, it's just kind of become, it's evolving for, for your generation to understand that it's been there, but it's always, it's, as long as it's great music, yeah. it's great music. Yeah. But then sometimes I think there's a lot of nonsense, so I'm not going to say who's Ooh, a nonsense, but I'm say there's a lot of nonsense okay, out there. Okay. I nonsense. can say that because I'm older. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. You're not going to say it, but <laughs> yeah, I don't understand that. Yeah. Yeah. So you said that there's nonsense there, things have changed, things are getting better. What would you say you're liking in this world, like right now, that maybe wasn't there before? Us over here, black, black you know, especially black females position, yeah. in this country are under control because I think in America, there's a, there's a demographic for us, you know, mm -hmm. they've got their own audience. They was here. We never really had our own platforms and our own you know, that, that we could go to and say, this is something for us where we're just being celebrated. But okay. now, I think what's really dope is that we are in control yeah. of our own narratives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like for now. That is really good. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely a change that has yeah, hopefully becoming more and more. We can see 100%. more independent people. And because you, you guys are in control. It's not, no yeah. one else is controlling. Mm -hmm. You guys are in control. We have to do it for ourselves mm -hmm. because people aren't always doing it the way that we want it to be done too. There you go. What are you 
kind of most looking forward to for people taking from your own music that you're releasing? Do you know what? I, I really want people to go, when they listen to this album especially, is to go back and listen to everything else mm. that I've done so they can see that I've, I've been saying the same thing. I haven't changed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've evolved. I've grown. I'm more confident in the sense, yeah. in the sense of what I'm, you know, what, I'm, what I want to say and what, what I'm about. But I've been saying that I'm... So my first album was called Untitled, yeah. which meant basically... I've been honest saying I don't know what I am right yeah, now. So when you listen to the album, there's a, there's a bit of jazz on there, there's a bit okay. of hip hop, there's a bit of soul, Everything. there's a bit of pop. Yeah. But ultimately, I was always soulful. But I didn't, I, I, I just never used to want to call myself soulful because I didn't think I was a soul singer. But then obviously, the older I started to get, I realised everything that I did, did was soulful and, and, and jazzy. But I'm soulful, soulful before jazzy, mostly. I'm soulful. Yeah. So. And then I realised I'm just a singer, I'm a soulful singer. Mm -hmm. That's where you are at now. Yeah. And that's what we're going to see from this album. Yes, yes. Okay. What song are you actually most looking forward for people to hear from the album? Oh, there's a song called um, Viva um, La Revolution. It's called Rhythm of Change. And it's basically saying, do what you got to do, say what you need to say to get you through the day. Mm -hmm. When things get harder, because sometimes, you know, we're, we're centering ourselves and holding ourselves back for people, humbling ourselves to people yeah. that are not humble yeah. and not, not together with themselves. Mm -hmm. And then you find yourself then becoming very anxious and you start questioning yourself, you start doubting yourself, but really and truly you're listening to people that, that don't even know what they're talking about. Yeah. So, But when you do talk, when you do speak, speak your mind, you end up finding the people that you're supposed to yeah. find. You're you know what I mean? You find your own people. So mm -hmm. I just feel like, it's, well, obviously as long as you're not hurting anyone, mm -hmm. but just mm -hmm. be honest. Be so that's why we have the people in this room here who are yeah, supporting. Yeah, there you go. There, people who want to come together with you. Um, and then just to ask, what, do you, what kind of advice do you have for this new generation and especially when it comes to like independence and mm. doing things on your own back and doing things that you want to do, not because other people are telling you to do them. Yeah. yeah what advice do you have for the new singers? Well, I did, I did the same advice I would um, always give. Just keep doing you, keep being honest and keep doing your research. Like, yeah. keep looking for people that you see that are not like anybody else. Stop mm. trying to, like, of course, you can follow people's story and history, like, mm. oh my God, this person's done well, but how do they get there? And what, make, and what makes them be so, what, what's the reason why they stand out so much? Because yeah. there's no point of trying to copy and like, following other people's footsteps, but you're not mm -hmm. being yourself. Yeah. So okay. just be as, be as authentic and as, as unapologetic and as, and as proud of yourself as you yeah, can be. I love that. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And then finally, just to ask, what does being a black Brit or being in this community of black British people mean to you, your identity? Do you know what? So it's a hard one for me. Mm. I mean, I think just being a woman and just being a black woman in the times that we're in right now and then be able to say that I can still fly the flag for the people that did it for me before mm -hmm. is the most amazing feeling so ever. Good. And the fact that I'm standing here 20 years down yeah. the line in ownership of myself saying, listen, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. And everything that you did for us back then, I see you and I'm going to change the narrative yeah. to make sure that it's not going to happen again, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. What would you like your legacy to be? Yeah, 20 years on from Untitled to now. What's the future looking like and what, what do you want that legacy to be? I want my legacy to be to trust yourself, like, mm -hmm. that, to be able to say that, you know what, you'll make mistakes, things are, trust the process of your purpose, because that's, that's, that's the that's hashtag a, that I always put. That's the word. Just mm -hmm. that. Trust mm -hmm. the process of your purpose, because mm -hmm. once you know your purpose, like, you know, like when you're here today, you feel like, you know, you know you need to interview me yeah. because you know you want people to probably hear about. So yeah. keep trusting it. If you know something that you need to do, and your guts yeah. need to do it, yeah. and it feels right, mm -hmm. do it. I like that. Thank yeah. you. I'm going to say that like yeah. a little hashtag. It's a, good, it's a good hashtag. It's a good Daniel. hashtag. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. You're welcome. Good. Thank you. <laughs> good. Yeah.